What are people actually building with the AI Code Assist cursor? I found six different examples. I'm going to go through them briefly here. And then I want to actually step back and ask what we can learn from looking across the ecosystem about what cursor is good at, what it's not good at, what we haven't seen yet. And I think that will help us answer some of the larger questions that come to mind, like is cursor good for complex apps? Is cursor good for large code bases? Things like that. So example number one, uh, this is from one little coder. I'm going to put all of these in the YouTube comments. Uh, weather app. Can we write a weather app in JavaScript and get it runnable? Very simple, uh, and it's exactly what it says in the tin. Can you basically pull publicly available weather data, turn it into a nice graphical user interface? Uh, all about AI, the creator has a YouTube text search app. It looks simple, but I do appreciate the functionality here. It basically allows you to pull a video and do a text search through the video uh, because it pulls all of the transcript down and you can actually search through and you can get a timestamp for particular things you're looking for. So if you're going through and you're trying to understand like, where does this person talk about X or Y, you can just search for the word and find it really fast. Riley Brown uh, is building a following just talking about his journey as someone who doesn't code, but is coding using LLM. So that's his whole thing. And he uh, talked about Cursor in the context of bu building a Trello app a copycat. Um, looks pretty simple to me, uh, but I will definitely link it in. And you can look at it. Uh, a simple chat bot. Uh, the interesting thing here, uh, the creator Ricky had uh, is teaching his kid to code, and the kid built the chatbot herself, and she's eight. Uh, which, as someone with a kid, very impressive. My kid has not yet built a chatbot. <laughs> uh, and then Amar, who's a designer at Eleven Labs, took the weekend this past weekend and built a Mac app fully functional that's designed to solve for importing voice into video. And that's like, he's a creator, like it makes sense for him to do that. And I was impressed. I mean, maybe we shouldn't be surprised. He's head of design. It looks gorgeous. Like it's a really well-designed app. It looks so, the most polished of any of these that I've seen. Um, and then the last one I want to call out is uh, Chantastic is writing about or doing a video on Cursor and Python. So if you're wondering how does Cursor help you build in Python for AI use cases, there's a video for that too. So those are six different use cases. Again, I'll link them all below. I want to step back though. When you see the pattern here, I think you won't be surprised when I call out that most of these are really, really simple use cases. And I have three different hypotheses for why that might be true. One is the context window. The context window right now is 20,000 tokens on Cursor. Is it because the context window is short? Uh, well, not short, right? That's still dozens of pages, but is it short enough that it's an issue for larger code bases? Maybe. Is it that it is simple because people are rushing to production, want to show what they've built. There's this sort of creator urge to get out there and show you can push to production and people aren't really thinking through more complex use cases yet. Maybe. Is it because the lack of design thinking leads people to solve really simple pinpoint problems that are useful to them, but maybe not more fundamental and may not require a larger build. And that one kind of cuts both ways because a lot of the advice for MVPs is to build it simple, build for a pain point that you know really well. So in a sense, Cursor is enabling people to act on that general advice for sort of how you get into software, how you get into building things that are useful. I'm not sure which it is. Uh, Cursor has ways of handling context windows that sort of stretch around uh, the 20,000 limit sometimes. They don't really talk about that uh, very much. I wasn't able to find out a lot about it other than that they apparently have some proprietary methods of doing so. I think the design thinking is something I'm taking away. I think it's going to be increasingly important if software costs come down to be really thoughtful about what you want to build, how you want it to look, and why to stand out. And so in that sense, I think a Mars app uh, really shows the way that you can you can build something with an LLM, even if you don't know how to code, and you can make it look really nice. You can make it look really polished. And that's going to become increasingly important in order to justify the value of your software in a world where anyone and everyone is coding up web apps at the drop of a hat, which is 
the other big takeaway here. Like if an eight-year-old is coding a chat app, software is essentially free for anyone to produce. So all that being said, I'm curious what your take is. Where, what patterns do you see in this list of use cases I found? Are there use cases that I miss that people are building in? How do you see Cursor playing into the larger LLM ecosystem?